Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about dead space ventilation and how to manage it. From the previous lecture, we understood that the most of the alveolar dead space comes from high VQ areas rather than actual dead space. You also understood that alveolar dead space becomes a problem when it causes hypercapnia resulting in low pH. So if you're dealing with hypercapnia and a low pH, you have to increase the alveolar ventilation by increasing the minute ventilation. And this can be done either by increasing your respiratory rates or tidal volume. One of the things that you have to remember is you don't always have to correct hypercapnia. Most patients will tolerate hypercapnia pretty well. Consider permissive hypercapnia before making any changes. Permissive hypercapnia is a concept for mechanical ventilator and it's not for non-vented patients. Increasing the respiratory rates should increase your alveolar ventilation and improve your hypercapnia. The impact of increasing the respiratory rates on your arterial CO2 will depend upon fraction of alveolar dead space. Increasing the respiratory rate can turn into a problem if you need longer exhalation time, especially in the patient with COPD who have alveoli with long time constants. You will have to deal with air trapping and auto peep in such circumstances. Increasing the tidal volume will help alveolar ventilation as well. However, high tidal volumes are associated with increased mortality in ARDS and acute lung injury and for the patients who are at risk of developing them. We'll start with a situation in which the dead space is from decreased perfusion to normal or stiff alveoli. The treatment for this would be mostly treating their underlying cause. If you're dealing with hypercapnia in this situation, you can simply increase the respiratory rate and shorten eye time. You should be okay and would possibly not develop a lot of air trapping in these situations because alveoli have typically short time constants. Normal time constant for alveoli range between 0.1 to 0.2 seconds and these are even shorter in stiff lungs. Despite this, always monitor for auto peep when increasing the respiratory rates. So to manage that space, treat the underlying cause like COPD, asthma, reduce the obstruction, reduce auto peep and air trapping, optimize VQ by using peep and positioning, and reduce the anatomical or instrumental dead space. Let's look at all this one by one. Try to reduce the obstruction and usual obstructive things that you see in your clinical practice are secretions, tube blockages, kinking or biting of the tube, or bronchospasm. To manage these patients, perform regular suctioning. You can also use bronchoscopy if you have to clear out secretions in patients who have collapsed lungs. You can use bite blocks. Watch for air trapping. Avoid using small size endotracheal tubes. Use your bronchodilators and mucolytics or mucokinetics as indicated. To reduce air trapping, reduce obstruction and give enough exhalation time. To optimize VQ, you have to optimize your PEEP. One of the things about PEEP is you usually PEEP for treating hypoxemia. While increasing PEEP to recruit to improve your hypoxemia, you can sometimes start running into a problem of over distension, which can cause increased CO2. So in this figure, as you cause recruitment, you would see that your dead space fraction is going to improve and after you have achieved the maximum recruitment, you will now start going towards overinflation. And when you overinflate, your PaCO2 increase. So if you are looking at increase in PaCO2 at a constant minute ventilation, this usually indicates that you are on the overinflation side. Other thing to optimize will be your tidal volumes. You can watch how to optimize PEEP and tidal volumes in my previous lectures. As you increase PEEP, you cause more recruitment. However, you are also increasing the ventilation perfusion ratio of normal alveoli, causing some degree of distension. And as you continue to increase the PEEP, you can go into more over distension and worsening of VQ mismatch in the normal alveoli. Overdistending normal alveoli will increase PaCO2, while recruitment should increase your PaO2. 
So try to figure out the optimal PEEP and understand that the net effect of PEEP on gas exchange depends upon this balance between over distension of aerated alveolar units and recruitment of collapsed alveoli. Also know that if you are over distending the alveoli, you can certainly cause more injury to these alveoli. As you know, air trapping causes auto peep, so it's very important for you to monitor it and treat it. To reduce air trapping, give enough exhalation time. And to do that, the best way is to decrease your respiratory rate. You can drop your tidal volume and eye time as well. Treat air trapping by matching peep to auto peep. Do not exceed the auto peep number as it will increase your end expiratory lung volume and work of breathing. To understand this in more detail, I have discussed this in how to set up respiratory rates. So please look at that video. The link is in comments below. As you know that most of the dead space comes from high VQ areas. You should set up the patient. Make sure that your head of bed is elevated. Avoid your patient slipping into the angle of the bed and see if proning can help. Remember that anatomical dead space causes increased CO2 by increasing recirculation of exhaled air, which is rich in carbon dioxide. If you use high flow, you should be able to remove the exhaled air rich in carbon dioxide and change it with air, which is very low in carbon dioxide. So your anatomical dead space decreases and you can improve your hypercapnia by this mechanism. One of the things that I wanted to retreat was that high flow is not to be used in hypercapnia from decreased minute ventilation. You can reduce the instrumental dead space while on the ventilator. You can have connectors in the circuit which can take up to 80 to 150 cc's and that increases your dead space which is called instrumental dead space and if you remove them you are going to reduce the recirculation of carbon dioxide and improve CO2. To understand how much this will help please see my lecture how anatomical dead space causes hypercapnia. One of the other cool methods that you can use is called CO2 washout. In this, you can put a high flow cannula via the ET tube to the level of crina. And when you give oxygen through this tube, the oxygen is going to replace the CO2 in the endotracheal tube and upper airways. And when you rebreathe, you are not breathing the recirculated carbon dioxide and that can reduce your PaCO2. So you are in fact reducing this anatomical and instrumental dead space shown in green. This is a little complicated because it's going to mess up the volume assessment on the ventilator and make sure that you have protocol for this. This is very rarely used technique so make sure that it is done by the experts. In summary, treat the underlying cause like COPD, make sure that you treat the obstruction. Think about permissive hypercapnia before changing anything. You can increase your alveolar ventilation by increasing the respiratory rate. Think about adverse effect of increasing tidal volumes for increasing alveolar ventilation. This should be possibly done as a very, very last resort if needed. Handle your secretions, prevent biting of the tube and use bronchodilators appropriately. Make sure your patient is appropriately positioned. Try to figure out optimal PEEP to recruit, but avoid over distend. While on ventilator, always monitor auto PEEP and reduce auto PEEP by decreasing the respiratory rate and eye time, which will give the patient more time to exhale. If you have auto PEEP and you have done everything to correct it, you can use PEEP to match auto PEEP to reduce work of breathing. You can reduce anatomical and instrumental dead space if possible. Thank you.